Good morning. And how's everyone this morning? Great. Good to see you here this morning. We have just a few announcements that I'm going to highlight. If you'd like to follow along, they're in the back portion of your bulletins. And uh, this morning we have some beautiful flowers over here, some yellow roses. They're in memory of uh, the sister of Myrna Noss. Her name was Karen Hohenschelt. Uh, also, we have another table set up in the hall. And uh, many of you already have signed up to have your portrait or pictures taken for our new church directory, which will be coming out later this year. If you haven't done so, after the service this morning, you can sure stop by the table and we'll have help there to sign you up for a session. There are sessions in August and September. Or you can also do it online if you go to our church's website. There's simple instructions to follow so you can look at your calendar and your schedule. And, and uh, we'd like to get as many of our members in that new church directory as possible. So it's a great tool and resource for us to get to know each other by face and by name, not just in this service, but also in the 830 service. We have another bunch of members. So other announcements you see in your bulletin, and we're going to begin this morning with the song Hope of the Nations.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Be to me a rock of refuge. You have given the command to save me. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We'll speak the introit responsively. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. My enemies say of me in malice. And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words. All who hate me whisper together about me. They say a deadly thing is poured out on him. Even my close friend in whom I trusted. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me. By this I know that you delight in me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost is from Leviticus chapters 18 and 19. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt, where you lived, and you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan, to which I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. You shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my rules. If a person does them, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. Neither shall you gather 
the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind. But you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. But in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand up against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, the first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ, on your behalf, and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience, with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transformed us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him, Jesus, to the test, saying, He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three, do you think, proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, Jesus said to him, You go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The law says, do this, and it is never done. 
So wrote Dr. Luther in the Heidelberg Disputation of April 26, 1518. What he was going on to say is that the law is a very demanding slave master, always promising you that if you will do one more thing, you will be set free. All the while it locks the shackles on tighter and tighter. Now this isn't to say that the law of the Lord is bad. It is God's word, and thus it is always good. For those of us who are sinners, the law becomes like a deep knife, that, or a knife that stabs deep into us, convicting us that the whole law of the Lord is good and perfect and holy, while we are not good, perfect, and holy. We're wicked and sinful, imperfect, Guilty when we were born, sinful from the time our mothers conceived us. God's holy law sets the bar very high, very, very high for us. When it says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. We may and usually are indeed tempted to start climbing the ladder of perfection according to the law. We look at the first three commands and say, oh, these look easy. We don't have shrines left in the United States, or at least not many, where we can go and pray to idols. So it would seem that the first two commandments are really well kept by us all. Until the word of the Lord comes along stating, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And we quickly realize that there are other things that we have feared, loved, and trusted in above far more than we have feared, loved, and trusted God. The first table of the law is incredibly difficult for us to keep. Too difficult, in fact, for us to keep. Our love of God fails quickly. And we realize that we are in dire straits for keeping the law perfectly. So we turn to the second table of the law, thinking this might be easier. We look to the fifth commandment and proudly boast that we have never killed any person in our life. Until Jesus comes along as the final and true interpreter of the law and reminds us that whoever says, you fool, will be in danger of hellfire. Echoing the words of God that we heard in our Old Testament reading from Leviticus, you shall not hate your brother in your heart. Well, having fallen backwards on the ladder, we stammer, well, I've never committed adultery. I've never broken the sixth commandment. Then again, Jesus comes along and he says, everyone who has looked at a woman with lust in his heart has already committed adultery with her. And we realize that the second table of the law is just as difficult to keep as the first table because we cannot love our neighbor as ourself the way God commands It is is as James declares by holy inspiration, whoever keeps the law but, but stumbles at one point has become guilty of it all. The law, which in our sinfulness we cannot keep, demands our lives. And it beats us up blow after blow after blow of failures to keep the law perfectly until it finally kills us. Fight back as much as you may try. The law wins every single time, and it leaves us dead in our sins and trespasses, unable to save ourselves, for we are poor, miserable sinners who sin in thought, word, and deed. The wages of sin is death, and the soul who sins is the one who dies. So having been left for dead at the side of the road, Christ came to bear our infirmities. The word compassion in the New Testament is only ever used of Jesus. He's the one who has compassion on the crowd because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Even in our colic prayer today, we see compassion ascribed to the Lord Jesus when we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, in your deep compassion, you rescued us from whatever may hurt us. And so when we read that the Samaritan had compassion, we see Christ. 
Jesus Christ, who, though he was God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. He was taking up our weakness, and he was carrying our sufferings. We thought that it was because of God that he was stricken, smitten, and afflicted, but it was because of our rebellion that he was pierced. He was crushed for our, the guilt our sins deserved. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. It is on our wounds, on the sickness of sin that plagues us all, that Jesus pours water and blood from his wounded side on the cross to heal us. He washes us in the waters of holy baptism. He feeds us with his own life-giving meal of his body and blood. And he does this all of his own, with no help from us. He's the one that pays the full price of our sins, demanding no contribution from us. All that the law demanded of us, that which we could not do, Christ has come and does for us. From the cross, Christ declares, it is finished. The demands of the law have been fulfilled in Christ. He has kept the law and been perfect, just as our Father in heaven is perfect. The law says, do this, and it's never done. Grace says, believe this, and it is already done. And so Christ brings us to his church, the place of healing for sin-sick souls. He gives his all to care for us in the hospice care center. The cost for souls was what he paid. All that was needed to care for souls, to rescue them from sin and death, is provided by Jesus Christ. Even the innkeeper, whose job normally it would not be to care for his guests in this way, is charged by Christ to show the same compassion and care as Christ. To stand in his place and care for the souls entrusted to his care, like a pastor does for those that Christ entrusts to his care, with the same medicine that Christ used water, and blood. Having been saved from sin and death, now the new man in us, the one born of the water of holy baptism, has the same heart and mind as that of Christ Jesus. It is the heart that loves the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. It is a renewed by Christ where we are called in grace to be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God so that we may love God and neighbor. Christ gives us his body and blood to eat and to drink in order that as we will pray in the post-communion collect, We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, that is, through this gift of his body and blood in the supper. That he would strengthen us through that in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Jesus Christ is the one who proves to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers. The one filled with compassion to save you the one beaten up and left dead by the law. When Christ says, go and do likewise, it really is as if Christ is saying to you and to me, I am the one who fulfills the law and who brings God's mercy. I am your neighbor and I will give you the gifts of mercy, healing, life. As I live in you, you will have life and will do mercy not motivated by the laws and definitions, but animated by my love. The law says, do this, 
and it's never done. You cannot merit or earn eternal life based on the law. Its demand that you must be perfect in all things at all times is too much. Christ is perfect, for he is God. The one who has come in human form to have compassion on all who have been beaten up and robbed by the law and left for dead. Christ has had compassion on you. He has bound up your wounds by his wounds on the cross. And he has poured out water and blood from his crucified side to heal you. Having cared for you, he has placed you into the care of his innkeepers, pastors who continue to administer that same water and blood for your healing so that you may show compassion and mercy to all that you encounter. Christ is your neighbor who has saved you, in whom you have redemption, the forgiveness of all your sins. To him be the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we give thanks for your great rescue and the gift of forgiveness, life, and salvation in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Help us to cherish your kingdom always. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, give us opportunities to share your love with others and use the gifts you provide to the praise and honor of your name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, protect your people and protect your church throughout the world, that we be bold in our witness and always ready to serve in the power of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, send your Spirit into the hearts and minds of those who have wandered from the faith, and by your word of truth, convict them and bring them to faith again in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, be with, encourage, and sustain those who are struggling with poor health at this time, especially those of our church family as listed in the bulletin, and remembering Kelly Greeley's and Debbie Mays. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless Pastor Both and the youth from our church who are traveling with others from our area to the higher things gathering in Wisconsin this week. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You may be seated as we gather our offerings.
We stand for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sahel, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of your beloved Son. In Jesus we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, and whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you for this redemption. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that he establish in us a living faith. Prepare us now and always to remember our Redeemer with joy as we approach your altar. And let us be in steadfast faith receive him who comes in his body and blood. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, In giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion. 
your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated for the distribution. sadness
We stand for our post-communion thanksgiving. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father and Savior of the world, we give thanks to you in the power of your Holy Spirit that you have refreshed us with your true body and blood in this sacrament. And now we ask you in your mercy to strengthen us with your holy gift so that we trust and serve you all the days of our lives and share your love with one another and all people. We pray that all of this, Lord Jesus, in your holy name, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you. 